Hey folks, I'm Mr. Hartzler and I want to talk to you about activity 3.1.3 and we're going to do parts 1 and 2. But keep in mind, part 1 is just you copying the stuff that Project Lead the Way put in the packet, uh, which I'll either hand to you or give you to you on Classroom. I don't know if I want to waste the paper yet or not. But if you copy that into the program, into Robot C, which is uh, over here, up on the screen, on the left, and once you copy that in and you kind of look at what it does, you don't need me to just type that in for you. So instead, let's skip to part two. That involves typing in the stuff to make the code above happen. We want to wait until the bump switch. Well, that's this little thing here. We want to wait until we push that button. Once we push it, we want both of our motors to spin forward at half speed. Then we're going to wait until I push the sensor again, and we're going to have both of them switch direction. Go for three and a half seconds and then just stop on its own. We don't want to have to push the button to make it stop. All right, let's do that. And we're going to come over here. And we have to go until. So let's actually go over in the left under natural language. Let's hit that plus button. Go down until you hit until. And then you've got a lot of options. I know it's kind of small and hard to read, but the top two and that bottom one are both things we could, are all things we could use. So the top one is until bump and then it has sensor port and then delay time so we can put that in there until bump you type in your sensor port for so for us it is bump switch I know that because up in motors and sensors that's what we have named this bump switch and you can tell it a time delay that uh, is sometimes helpful if for some reason the switch is starting to go bad and maybe you push it down and as you come up it's actually bouncing the signal still arcing back and forth a little bit, so maybe it's counting it as multiple bumps. Um, that might be an issue, and you might want to put in some kind of time delay for that. We're not going to have to worry about it. And I actually, before this, I want to type in a little wait. I tested this out before I did this video, and without the wait, you can see it skipping right past this bump. Um, I'll show you that towards the end of the video, I think. But we actually want to have just a tiny little wait in here. This is one second, so now it's a tenth of a second. Just so that everything can wake up, and then it will recognize the sensor being bumped. All right, so we have until bump, and then we have to start motors. We have to start, there we go, start motor. And we're going to start our right motor first. And we're doing half speed, so that's 63 and a half. And then I have to start my left motor. And that one is also at 63 and a half. Now we wait until we press that button again. Again, that's above and that little gray and green and, and there's a lot of colors in that box. Anyway, now we have until, bump, and we're still looking at the bump switch. And once that happens, I wanna start motors. I wanna start my right one still. Oh, not that one. Start my right. There we go. Sorry, sometimes I'm a bad typer. I want to start my motor, but this time in reverse. And I'm going to do the same thing with my other one. I want to start left motor, and it also needs to be in reverse, so negative 63 and a half. And at this point, we're just going to wait the three and a half seconds. So we have a small wait just to make sure everything wakes up all right. Otherwise, um, you might have an issue. Maybe you don't, but my Cortex had an issue. So we're going to wait until the bump switch is pressed. You start both motors. You'll notice we're starting them both at full, or sorry, at half speed, 63 and a half. And that happens until you press the bump switch again. And once that happens, you start both motors. But you'll notice there's negative signs, so we're starting them in reverse. We wait three and a half seconds, and then we stop both of our motors. Oh, you'll notice that maybe these are pushed in a little bit. If you go up in the top, you can fix formatting, and it actually shoves everything to where it needs to be. Everything should be between these two braces, so they're actually uh, stepped in a little bit or indented. So we have all of our code in here now, and this ends up getting a little loud on the video, so I'm actually going to turn off the audio, but I'll kind of be pointing at these. And keep a look in these little windows. You can kind of see those little fins uh, spinning. And that will help you to see that they're going in one direction and then they change. All right, so we have to compile that program. No errors popped up below the file name. And download it to the robot. We'll have to hit our start button. There, everything's up and loaded. We're going to hit the start button. 
Oh, nothing happened. Good, because it's supposed to wait until I hit that little button right there. All right, now it's going to hit the button, spin one way, I'll hit it, it'll spin the other way, it'll count down, and then stop. All right, let's see how this goes. Hopefully you saw them switch in there, but if not, uh, trust me, they did. So they spun one way until they hit the button, then they spun the other way, and then they counted for those three and a half seconds, and then they stopped. Uh, oh, not responding. Now it's responding. So it counted for those three and a half seconds, and then it just turned itself off. So hopefully this was helpful, and if it was, please click that like button down below. I'll put a link to my next video up over here, and that'll be for parts three and then uh beyond that you know four and five and i don't know how many of the section has well if this was helpful again please hit that like button subscribe to the channel if that's something you're into and uh hope you have a great rest of your day